All right, recording. Six brave singles who tried everything to find love put their fate in the hands of three experts to get legally married to a complete stranger. Every week, they share their most intimate thoughts. This is Married at First Sight Confessions. So I'm home. I told Derek that I don't want to be married anymore and I feel relieved. I, I really didn't know what to expect going into it. Uh, I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be pleasant. Uh, I knew it was going to be kind of awkward. Um, and it was. So, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to, to reach out to, to Heather to be friendly with her and whatnot. And, you know, it's just, it's just not there between us. I don't want to say that I hold her responsible for it, but she is the one that chose a divorce so soon. Um, so to me, that's like, you know, just it just kind of short changes the whole process. So there's a little bit of animosity uh, in that regard, just in the sense of, you know, we, we were supposed to do this thing all the way through. 10 days is not very long to know somebody. But it, what I can tell you and what people who know me can tell about me is that there was clearly something that was not right, that was clearly against um, a boundary that I had set, a deal breaker that I had set prior to even meeting Derek. And I, I, can't, I can't move forward in that aspect. I'm not sure if I'll ever see Heather again at this point. Um... You know, when I, when I see her, the thing that I think about most is missed opportunities. Um, I understand that this is a difficult process, but being around her is so, is so frustrating for me because it's like, you know, we just we put so much time and effort into something and, and walked away from it so soon. I don't feel bad about being me. I don't feel bad about sticking up for who I am and the life that I want to lead because at the end of the day, at the end of my life, the beginning of tomorrow, I have to be okay with the decisions that I make. So Rachel came by to visit us and it was really helpful because I had just gotten the news that I need to get surgery on my shoulder and all of that going on. They told her she's gonna need uh, shoulder surgery and um, it's going to be rough because it's devastating for her and scary. Um, you know, uh, I don't like seeing Lily cry. Uh, it makes me sad. I wanted to talk to her, but it wasn't something I wanted to deal with at that moment. I really didn't. I was stressed out, worried about my health, seeing how I'm going to manage things, what am I going to do. I needed to process that and I just didn't want to do it. It was really beneficial for, for Rachel to stop by. Lillian was absolutely just not having it. She, she was not ready in the beginning. Um, but, you know, we gave her some time to think and to take it all in. I am really happy, though, that I did speak to Rachel because once I spoke to her, I feel like a lot of my stress, like, was lifted because Tom and I needed to talk about it. Whether Rachel was here or not, he and I needed to address the issue and talk about it and move forward. Uh, Lily's concerns uh, were addressed and, you know, we got to talk about it. We got to expose our insecurities. We're learning about each other's insecurities and the things that we don't like and why we put up the walls we put up and that's really important. So I'm really happy that Ra that we were able to speak to Rachel. We're gonna try to roll with it the best we can, try to adapt to it and um, and I'm there for her whenever she needs and I wanna be there to help her any way I can. I knew Tom was there as soon as I told him about the surgery even before Rachel got to the house. You know, it's good that we actually got to communicate and get it all out and just to be all on the same page and um, it was really, really important. And not only that, she gave us some good homework. I can't wait to use the body paint. <laughs> I think that'll be really fun. 
I just truly can say I do not know Heather at all. I mean, this is my life. This is my life. Can you feel a heartbeat? I can't. Do you have heart? Yesterday, Nick and I went to the, um, that, like, Tantra Kun, Kundini, Kun, I forgot, um, but we went there and, um, it went really well. I felt like it went really well. I, um, I felt really positive coming out of there. Like, I just felt, like, good vibrations and just, like, good. I'm trying to do awkward homework over here. Let's try to touch your heart. Can you feel a heartbeat? I can't. Do you have heart? I'm like the Tin Man. Or more like, more like the Cow Divine. I feel like every time Nick and I speak with the experts, we get like a read, but we're like, okay, this is what our relationship is supposed to go to. Like, this is, this is where it's gonna go. I feel like we're, some of are in a good position to move forward, and sometimes we have little hangups that get in the way, but I think we're getting to a point where we're both starting to figure out how to, how to really appreciate each other. Having people believe in you, and having people think like, you know what, these two can make it. Having a team around you that feels like it's gonna happen means everything. The energy is different, and I think it's kind of going in a positive direction. I love your sunglasses. Yeah, they're really like bringing out my spiritual side. I see it. So I'm just getting home from a trip and it was a long trip and it, it was exhausting, but you know, it felt really good to go back to what I know and I just want to move forward. So that's what I'm doing, getting back into the swing of things, getting home, it feels good, it feels normal. Well, honestly, at this point, all this time since the marriage, it's just the wedding, I truly can say I do not know Heather at all, you know? Um, I. I I met her a little bit. I, I believe I saw the part of her that she wanted to show. Um, but it's not like I ever really got a, a chance to, to, to really know the person that she is. And the same thing goes for her. She has no idea the type of person that I am. You know, when you only know somebody for 10 days, you don't have that investment in them yet to say, you know, things are gonna be okay or you know it's it's hard to be with someone for that short amount of time and to see all these qualities you really don't like and think oh i can't wait to get through this you know it's kind of like eh i wish you the best but not for me and that's pretty much the decision i had to make the interesting thing that i thought about that even after this meeting tonight um, it's like i feel like she's more of a stranger now than she was the day that we got married at least when we got married um, I felt that connection and, and that thought there was a willingness from both of us, um, which I thought brought us together. But now we definitely feel like two strangers, even though uh, we have a bit of time and history between us. Derek might be mad. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him. It's kind of an embarrassing thing, especially when this is all televised. Um, no one wants to look like a No one wants to look like a bad person. But, you know, if you, if you met somebody and in 10 days you found out a lot of things that you were really not cool with, would you stay or would you go? I mean, this is my life. This is my life. So I'm glad to be home. I'm glad to be in my home and enjoying a night back from a trip. I guess the, the, the point of the meeting was for closure. You know, hopefully, uh, for me, that helps me bring, uh, bring, bring some closure to the situation. So, um... These couples put everything on the line for love. At the end of the six weeks, they'll have to make a decision. Will they stay married or get a divorce? It's all coming up this season on Married at First Sight. 
don't feel like you're a stranger. I know, right? I never pictured getting married to a stranger. You may kiss your bride. 